It had been a long time since they'd experienced such a powerful rainstorm. It was a true downpour. Large drops loudly drummed against the window panes, leaving the most intricate patterns in their wake. The storm had been raging for several hours, with lightning flashing with all its might and power, momentarily illuminating the dark sky, followed by the thunder's roar echoing through the empty streets. Miranda Crossman stood by the window, mesmerized, watching the natural spectacle unfold. She couldn't tear herself away from the breathtaking scene, feeling how each moment filled her soul with a special kind of thrill and excitement. The raging storm seemed to wash away all her worries and troubles, rejuvenating her spirit and taking her back to a long-gone past. Many years ago, when she was just a young girl, she had experienced a similar rainstorm that changed her life forever. On that memorable day, under the pouring rain, she met her future husband. They were drenched to the bone, but it didn't matter. They laughed, ran through puddles, and enjoyed every moment as if the whole world belonged to them. It was the beginning of their amazing story, full of love, joy, and shared adventures. Many years have passed since then. Together they raised two wonderful children, sparing neither effort nor time. They shared happiness and sorrow, supported each other in the toughest moments, and created their own little universe filled with love and understanding. Now, the children had grown up and started their own families, but Mrs. Crossman and her husband remained the closest people in the world to each other. As she stood by the window watching the trees sway in the wind, she fondly remembered those distant moments that had forever stayed in her heart. The storm continued to rage, but for Mrs. Crossman, it was more than just a natural phenomenon. It was a symbol of her life bright, intense, and full of love. She was very happy. They spent almost all their free time together, going fishing, picking mushrooms and berries, and taking walks in the woods and parks. Miranda had always wanted to buy a small house to spend time in the countryside, tending to colorful flower beds, and her husband supported her wish. So they decided to start saving little by little, with the goal of eventually buying a plot of land with a small house. The children had grown up, but Mrs. Crossman and her husband didn't need help. They had a good pension. And now, when the couple had decided to buy a house, Miranda gathered the courage to call her son Richie first. Hi, son. Can you help your father and me? We want to buy a house, but we're short of half the amount. Mum, why do you need this house? A house requires investments and extra time for repairs, but we can't help with that. We're always busy with work. You have a nice apartment, live there, and don't create unnecessary problems for us or yourselves. But it's fresh air, and the river is nearby. You could bring the grandchildren for the holidays, the woman stammered. I'm not asking for the whole amount, just half. You'll get the house eventually anyway. Mum, I don't have any spare money. Chloe has decided to go to the seaside, and we're getting ready for that. Call Rachel, Richie said, ending the conversation. Then her husband Samuel just left, leaving her all alone. He left before her, even though he had promised always to be by her side. The death of her beloved husband threw her off balance for a long time. She couldn't pull herself together for a while, but one day she dreamed of him, young and smiling, as he was in the old days. In the dream, he urged her to live on, promising that they would be together again. Samuel said he would wait, but she shouldn't rush and should remember that now she had to live as she wanted. It was time to stop living for others, and she must buy the house she had dreamed of for so long. After that dream, she felt better, and Miranda truly began to calm down, learning to live without her beloved husband and continuing to save money for the cherished house. She stood by the window, enjoying the view of the storm and the rain as everything rumbled and flashed around her. It seemed to her that this violent downpour washed everything away, bringing with it peace and memories of those happy days. 
It's just a magical sight, Mrs. Crossman said enthusiastically, even though her words seemed to irritate everyone present. At the same time, it's both frightening and beautiful. Richie, noticing her calmness, cautiously intervened. Mom, now is not the time to think about the storm. We're discussing an important matter. This concerns everyone. This isn't the time for distractions. What happened? Mrs. Crossman asked cheerfully, without taking her eyes off the window. Richie continued talking, but the elderly woman just smiled in response. Her daughter Rachel also expressed her displeasure. Well, Mum, Richie is right. You're particularly sentimental today. First you like the rain, then you suddenly remember your youth, and then Dad. What's going on with you? We didn't come here because of the weather or memories. We came for a completely different reason. Then why did you come, she asked. I thought this time you finally remembered me and decided to visit me. I even bought a cake, thinking we'd have coffee together. When was the last time we all gathered like this? Do you remember? I don't. I think for the last five years you haven't cared how I live, how your father and I lived, she added with a heavy sigh. Mrs. Crossman understood the situation perfectly, and that's why she behaved the way she did now. Unfortunately, the three people closest to her didn't come just to spend time and find out how she was doing. Richie had even travelled from another city specifically for this visit. Her older brother Sheldon, who hadn't been in touch with her for ages, had also appeared out of the blue. And the reason for all this was a sudden inheritance, so significant that it seemed almost inappropriate. Miranda was contacted by a serious lawyer who told her a few shocking facts. It turned out that the man who had raised her and her brother was only Sheldon's biological father, while she was the daughter of another man. How exactly it happened that her biological father found her in his old age remained a complete mystery. Nevertheless, before his death, he left a will in which all his property was bequeathed to her. That's what the lawyer who handled the case had informed her. He named the amount of the inheritance, and the figures were incredibly impressive. Mrs. Crossman simply couldn't comprehend the scale of it, and there was no one to contest the will. After his divorce, the man never remarried, focusing exclusively on his business and accumulating wealth. Judging by the size of the inheritance, he had succeeded more than well. Soon after, her son Richie, daughter Rachel, and older brother Sheldon found out about the inheritance. Mrs. Crossman was sure that her children had already quarreled among themselves, trying to determine who would get what but when they realized that their mother wasn't going to participate in the division of the property, they were simply shocked. How could she not want to share with us her closest children? After all, they were the only family, and it was logical to divide the inheritance that would be fair. Each of them had their own needs and desires, and what did she, an elderly woman, still need? She could buy that house. But even a fraction of the inheritance would suffice for that. Moreover, they knew her as a selfless person, ready to sacrifice everything for the sake of her children's well-being. That's why the three of them had gathered today and come to their mother to convince her to reconsider her decision and think about their needs. But their efforts were in vain. They brought up all sorts of convincing arguments, trying to make her see why she should share the inheritance with her close relatives. However, all their attempts were useless. Mrs. Crossman remained steadfast, and no reasoning could change her mind. No, my dears, don't count on me. I won't give you anything, Mrs. Crossman confidently replied. But why, Mum? Rachel protested. Why are you being so cruel? We're not strangers to you. Won't your conscience bother you after this, she continued trying to make her mother feel guilty. After what? I don't understand you. Mrs. Crossman raised an eyebrow in surprise. After you refused to share with us, Rachel explained without blinking. But why should my conscience bother me? 
her mother asked, sincerely puzzled. My conscience is clear, and I can sleep peacefully. Besides, to be honest, I don't understand why you need this money. You already have everything. As far as I know, until recently you considered yourselves happy people who lacked nothing. What suddenly changed? Oh, come on, Miranda, her brother Sheldon said with offense. How are we happy? The house needs repairs, the car is old, and there are many other expenses. Are you talking about the house that we inherited from our parents? Mrs. Crossman clarified. Yes, that one, of course, Sheldon confirmed. But that house was left to you, and you didn't share it with me. You arranged everything in your name back then and said it would be better that way. Well, I didn't argue I didn't want to fight with you. And when you got married, your wife kicked me out of that house. And I'm not even sure I could find my way back there now. Mrs. Crossman said this, as if recalling something distant and insignificant. Her children, on the other hand, felt the growing tension, realizing that all their attempts to manipulate their mother had failed. But I'm already divorced from her. Didn't you know that? Her brother began to justify himself. She's to blame for everything, not me. You understand that money is needed for the house repairs. I'll give you some, but that's it. Don't expect anything more from me, Mrs. Crossman firmly replied. Sheldon continued to explain something to her, but Miranda was no longer listening. That's enough. It's already clear. You won't get any more money, except for the house repairs and even then, only in memory of our parents. And I will personally oversee that everything is done properly. The woman turned her gaze to her daughter. And what about you, dear? Are you also lacking for a happy life? Or is there no money for house repairs? As far as I know, your married daughter and your husband earns well. At least until recently, you were never in need. Mrs. Crossman asked, looking at her daughter. Nothing happened, Mum. Everything is fine with me. But you must give me money. You're my mother, so if this wealth fell into your lap, you're simply obligated to share it with me. Am I not right? Isn't that just a mother's instinct or something? I see how it is with you. Mrs. Crossman replied thoughtfully. Well, consider that I don't have that instinct. What do you mean you don't? Rachel protested. You're my mother, so you must have that instinct. Well, I don't, daughter. The instinct is gone, the woman said with a smile. Then the mother turned to her son. And you, son, what problems do you have? But Richie was more cunning. He didn't directly ask for money, but just tried to convince her that everything was fine with him, though he casually added, Lend me some money for a while and I'll definitely pay you back. I have an interesting opportunity ahead and when it works out I'll give you everything back. I promise. You'll manage without my money. Mrs. Crossman calmly replied. What do you mean, Mum? Richie couldn't believe his ears. You don't believe me. Do you think I won't return it? Dear, of course, I believe you, the elderly mother said. Then what's the problem? The son continued to insist. Mrs. Crossman looked at her son and reflected on where and when she had gone wrong by giving them everything. She had helped each of her children as much as she could. After her husband's death, she sold her nice three-room apartment in the center, and the children immediately divided the money among themselves, leaving their mother with a small sum. She even had to move into a communal apartment, but she didn't complain as long as her loved ones were happy. She thought she could get by somehow. Now she looked at her children and realized that her sacrifices were in vain. They had gotten used to receiving without considering that their mother also had needs and desires. She was just a source of help for them, not an individual. This truth was painful to realize, but she accepted it. No, Richie, Mrs. Crossman said firmly, I won't give you anything more. You've already received your share. I also have the right to a peaceful old age. 
And you know what? I want to live for myself for the rest of my days. But her son continued to insist. Mom, you'll see, I won't let you down. I'll definitely pay you back. I have a great opportunity to start my own business, and you're stingy about giving even a small part of this sudden wealth. We still have our whole lives ahead of us, and we want to live it well. His cynicism was evident. Miranda, since it's like this, I also forgot to mention Sheldon added his part. I, like everyone else, have important plans and projects, and I'll return the money at the first opportunity. You trust me, don't you, sis? Mrs. Crossman sighed heavily and looked at her children. Of course I believe you, I believe you endlessly, but I won't give money to anyone. All three just exchanged surprised glances. Why, Mum Ritchie asked, unable to hide his confusion. For a few minutes, Miranda thought. She had denied herself everything all her life to raise and educate her children while not refusing help to her brother. And now, she finally had a chance a chance to live for herself and fulfill her dreams. But how much longer can one live for others even if they are your own children, especially since her late husband had told her this in a dream. You see, my dears, she began slowly, choosing her words, I've given you everything I had. I hope you can build your lives, and each of you has done so in your own way. But I'm also a person. I also have my own needs and desires in my old age. I want at least some peace and security for the future. I want to live for myself for the rest of my days. I also very much want to find answers to my questions. For example, why didn't I get half of our parents' apartment and grandma's house? Why did you refuse to help when I asked for just a few thousand for a house purchase? And most importantly, why has none of you invited me to visit even once in all these years? Am I not needed by you? Mrs. Crossman said with a note of sadness in her voice. What are you saying? Of course you're needed, the children answered in unison, but now somewhat uncertainly and confusedly. Then my questions remain why, the mother calmly continued. Silence ensued. No one knew what to say. Mrs. Crossman looked at her children with sadness. So it turns out that my questions remain unanswered, she sighed and looked out the window where the storm was raging again. The silence hung in the room, and everyone was lost in their thoughts. Mrs. Crossman was the first to break the silence. You know, my dears, I've been through a lot in this world, but I've come to understand one thing life is too short to spend it on constant sacrifices and expectations. I deserve happiness and peace. I deserve respect and care. And if you truly love me, you'll understand and accept my decision. You know, I was just thinking the other day, why not go on a journey? I've always dreamed of seeing the world. For example, I could go to Paris and take a walk around Montmartre, she said thoughtfully, not taking her eyes off the window. And then I want to see Milan, Venice, Carlo Vivari. And maybe after that, I'll want to settle somewhere by the sea and live out the rest of my life enjoying myself instead of at that moment a storm broke out outside the window. Lightning lit up the sky, and thunder rumbled loudly over the house. The relatives instinctively recoiled. I'm not working right now, my husband fully supports me. But what if something happens? I'll be left with nothing. I need to have some sort of financial cushion. You don't think about your grandchildren at all, her daughter reproached her. Then go to work. You have an education, so don't just rely on your husband, Mrs. Crossman replied. Rachel tried to say something else, but was met with a cold, unyielding gaze from her mother. Richie also tried to manipulate her again, now using his wife's second pregnancy. Your Chloe doesn't even remember what I look like, and now she wants money from me. And what about my granddaughter, Lisa, who's already five years old? She doesn't even know her grandmother's name. What have I done to deserve such treatment? 
Is this how a loving son should treat his mother? You haven't visited for a long time, and you didn't even bring my granddaughter. And now you need money. Go with God, son, and tell your wife that you two don't deserve this money. Let her learn some basic respect, give as you know how. I've given you everything I could. That day the guests left empty-handed. Mrs. Crossman could see clearly that their hopes weren't entirely extinguished. However, she sincerely hoped that her children and brother would realize that happiness isn't measured by money, but by the value of each moment and the people around you. She wanted to explain this to them, but knew they weren't ready to grasp this simple truth. Mrs. Crossman hoped that her children and brother would eventually come to understand these important life lessons. Of course, she wasn't planning to spend her entire inheritance on herself, as she had been raised differently. But she also couldn't completely forget about her own needs and desires. She had earned the right to her own home and some peace after all those years when no one took care of her. But not now. Let them try to find answers to the questions she had posed. Maybe this process of searching would help them rethink their values and change their lives for the better. Mrs. Crossman hoped for this and believed that one day they would all realize that true happiness lies in love and mutual support, not in material wealth. Three years passed. During that time, the children and brother never came to terms with Mrs. Crossman's stance and didn't draw any conclusions from this story. Then one day they gathered at Sheldon's house to gossip and once again discussed their plans on how to make their mother see reason. The evening seemed calm and peaceful, but a sudden knock on the door broke the silence. A courier delivered an unexpected envelope via international mail. Opening its contents, their eyes widened in shock. There was a photo and a letter. In the photo... A happy and smiling Mrs. Crossman sat at a beautiful table in Paris, enjoying a delicious croissant with a cup of aromatic coffee. The Eiffel Tower was clearly visible in the background of the cosy Parisian street. Her face literally radiated happiness. The three of them looked at each other in bewilderment, not knowing what to think. They had already forgotten about this crazy trip. After all, three years ago when she announced her intention to travel, all attempts to dissuade her had failed against her firm determination. Back then, Mrs. Crossman had declared that one must seize every opportunity in life, and that Paris was her long-held dream, one she wasn't going to postpone due to age or the opinions of others. Pulling out the handwritten letter from the envelope, they began to read the message. Hello, my dear ones. I'm sending you warm greetings from France. My life is simply wonderful now. I'm enjoying my travels and have planned many more trips to various countries around the world. I finally realized that learning to truly live is a lifelong journey, even if it takes most of your life. But I'm trying, and I'll do my best to make up for lost time. I understand that after our last meeting, you didn't make much of an effort and my questions remained unanswered. From what I've heard, you continue to weave your intrigues and will never abandon your plans. Therefore, I've asked my lawyer to change my will. Without further ado, my will is as follows, all property movable and immovable, all bank savings will not go to you after my death. But don't rush to curse me. It will be given to your children in equal parts when they reach adulthood. You still have time to raise them properly, with love for their fellow human beings, and in harmony with the world around them. Use this chance and don't waste time. My foundation will ensure that your children grow up to be worthy individuals. If they don't, all my money will be donated to an orphanage that supports true orphans. Signed at the end of the letter from Paris with love, your dear mother and sister Miranda Crossman. Thank you for listening to the story till the end. Please support the channel with a like. It won't take much effort, but it means a lot to me. See you next time.